This is part 32 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to detect which mouse button is clicked using jQuery. When a mouse button is clicked, there are two events that are automatically triggered behind the scenes, mouse down and mouse up. When these events occur, the event object is automatically passed to the respective event handler method. Now, when we talk about event object, there are two flavors of it. We've got the raw JavaScript event object and the jQuery event object. When we are using the raw JavaScript event object, and if the browser is IE8 or earlier version, then we use the button property of the event object to determine which mouse button is clicked. So this button property is going to return one of these three values, one, four, or two. One for left, four for middle, and two for right. So with IE8 or earlier versions, we use event.button property to determine which mouse button is clicked. With IE9 and later version, and almost any other browser, we use which property of the event object to determine which mouse button is clicked. So this which property is going to return one of these three codes, one, two, or three, one for left, two for middle, and three for right. So with IE9 and later versions, we use event.which, IE8 and earlier version, we use event.button. So keeping this in mind, if we have to write some JavaScript code that works across all browsers, then this is how the code would look like. So basically here we have a function which mouse button clicked and to this function we are passing the event object. So basically this is raw JavaScript and this event object is the raw JavaScript event object. And within this function we have a variable which button and look at the check here event dot which. So if the browser supports which property of the event object, then we know it's got to be IE9 or later version or any other modern browser. In that case, we're going to use the which property of the event object to determine which mouse button is clicked. So if it's IE9 or later version or any other modern browser, switch on that property. And we know the switch property is going to return these three values, one of these three values, one, two, or three. If it's one, then in this which variable, which button variable, we are storing this message, left button clicked. And then we are breaking out of that case statement. If it is two, then it's a middle button, three, right button. If it's not any of those three values, then it comes to this default, in which case we are initializing that variable to invalid button clicked. Okay, so basically this block of code is for IE9 or later version or any other modern browser. If the browser does not support which property of the event object, then we know it is IE8 or earlier version. In that case, it's going to come to the cells part. And we know that IE8 or earlier versions support button property of the event object. So that's the reason here within the else section, we are switching on button property of the event object. And we know this button property is going to return one of these three values, one, four, or two, one for left, four for middle, two for right. And if it's not any of those three values, it falls onto this default, in which case we are initializing this variable to invalid button clicked. Okay, so this section is for IE8 or earlier version. This section is for IE9 or later version and then any other browser. Okay, so finally, what we are doing, we are finding the div element in which we want to display the message. Uh, div result is the ID, and we are using the inner HTML property to basically display the value within that div element. Okay, so let's flip to Visual Studio. So I have this function right here. So the same function that we have seen on the slide. And then here we have the button element and the div element to display the result. So when we click, you know, when a mouse click event occurs, there are two events, mouse down and mouse up. So I'm going to make use of mouse up event here. So on mouse up, what we want to do is call this function. What is the name of the function? Which mouse button clicked? And to that function, we are passing the event object, the raw JavaScript event object. So let's call that function. And to that, let's pass the event object. So let's save the changes. And let's go ahead and run this. So this is Internet Explorer. Look at this. When I left click, left button clicked middle click, right click. So it's IE11, it's working here. Let's actually change the browser mode to IE7 and see if it's going to work. So IE7, the browser is now running in IE7 mode. Now look at this, left, middle, right. 
All right. So this piece of code is working across all browsers, but quite a bit of code just to check which mouse button is clicked. Now let's see how to rewrite this using JavaScript event object. Okay. So I'm going to actually cut the switch statement because we need that. And this is raw JavaScript code, so I'm going to delete all of this. And since we don't have that function anymore, I'm going to remove this as well on mouse up attribute. Okay, so within the script section, we are going to now write some jQuery code. So dollar document dot ready. So when the document is ready, we want to execute a function. All right. So when the document is ready, what do we want to do? We want to associate first uh, on you know mouse up event with this button element. So button has got an ID. So let's use the ID selector. The ID of the button is BTN, and let's associate mouse up event. And when mouse up event occurs, you know this is the function that we that will be called this anonymous function. So this is the event handler. And to this event handler, the event object is automatically passed, right? So we are passing that event object. So the event object that's passed here is the jQuery event object, all right? So now we are actually going to switch on jQuery event object. So the advantage of using this jQuery event object is that jQuery has normalized this property which of the event object. So the switch property is now going to work across all the browsers. So you know within our jQuery code we use that which property and behind the scenes jQuery is going to check you know for if it's IE8 or earlier version then it's going to use that button property. So all that heavy lifting is done by jQuery for us. So within our jQuery code we just use the which property and this code is going to work across all browsers. Okay, so let's actually save these changes. And what else we have to do? We have to create this variable, which button. So let's copy that. So out of the switch statement, let's create that variable and initialize that to an empty string. Okay, so finally, what we want to do is find this div element and display the result within that. Again, the div element has got ID. So let's use the ID selector and the ID of the div element is div result. And let's use the HTML method and pass our variable, which button. All right, so let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and run this. OK, so at the moment, we are running in IE 11 mode. So left click, middle click, right click, all works. Now let's change the browser mode to IE 7. Right, so the browser now is running in IE7 mode. Look at this, left, middle, right. It still works. And look at the amount of code that we have to write with jQuery, okay? A lot less. So that's because jQuery normalizes this which property of the event object, and jQuery is going to ensure that this code is going to work across all browsers. And here is that example which we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.